Yeah, with this cool weather that we're having, uh, and deer season starting to come, people are getting ready to, to go camping. And they, they, and when you camp, you know, a lot of people just go camping because the weather's cool and, and things like this, you know. Uh, I enjoy camping. I don't get to do it. I haven't done it in a long time. But you know, one thing that when it cools off, the mosquitoes kind of, kind of die out. During the summer, you kind of get into the point that you know, you're, you're fighting the mosquitoes, you're fighting the heat. So this cool weather has kind of brought on a camping spirit into me. And, uh, now, my dear brother in Christ and friend, Heinz, that lives in Germany, he, he sent a thing to me that he said that he wanted to be so full of Christ that when mosquitoes bite him, the mosquito will start singing, there's power in the blood. <laughs> and uh, so, so I thought, you know, you know, you know, that kind of fit what I was having in my mind about camping, you know. There's just, the mosquitoes will even know who the Lord is and the power in the blood of Jesus. Now, years ago, uh, when it's been a long time, uh, Brenda and I and the kids went up to Oregon to visit my family. And, well, actually it was a reunion, uh, my 20th class reunion, and that's been a long time ago. But anyway, we went to there, and my brother lived out in the country and stuff like this. And and so Brenda and I decided to pitch a tent in their front yard. And so we thought, well, that's, kind of, well, not front yard, front pasture. You know, it's not really a yard. But you got to realize it was on a hill. And so the tent was at a slant. And, you know, it's not good to sleep on a hill because you kind of roll down, kind of, kind of roll down that hill in the tent, you know, we, you, during the middle of the night. And then there's the rocks that was underneath there and stuff. And not used to the weather, it got cold. And so the blankets that we had on it, Poor Brenda, she didn't have anything because I had all the blanket that night, even though rolling down the hill made it easier to steal the blanket, you know. So, you know, <laughs> it was a thing that, you know, it was camping. And so I enjoy it. Now, we used to take the kids to a place and, and we, uh, in Texas and we'd go and camp out until all of a sudden the alligators got too bad. We did decide not to sleep with the alligators. You know, they might have been comfortable for a while, but you know, they probably snore too much. But anyway, this morning, just thinking about camping, uh, I want us to turn to Deuteronomy 23.14. Deuteronomy 23.14. Praise God. Deuteronomy 23.14 says, for the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee and to give up thy enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy that he see no unclean thing in thee and to turn away from thee. Now, when we're talking about camp, not too many people will pitch a tent in the middle of the city. You know, except kids in their backyards to, to, to camp out. But most of the time we go out into the wilderness. We go out there where it's quiet and peaceful and stuff. We're totally in the wilderness. Well, the first part of this verse says, For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp. Otherwise, where we are camped, he it, when we're in the wilderness, God is even there with us. Mm. God is wherever we are, that his presence is always there, even in our wilderness. Sometimes we are walking in the wilderness and we actually camp out in the wilderness and it's our mentality that we are out there 
in the things that are wild, the things that are just totally just not in a peaceful situation. Some, uh, some people are walking in the wilderness mentality that, you know, they just think thoughts that are wilderness thoughts. That, you know, this is the way the things are and this, this way it's going to be, you know. You know, I was born this way and this is the way it's going to be. Yeah. And they keep having these thoughts that, you know, they, you know, I just don't know if I'm ever going to get yet there. They walk in the wilderness and they, but the Lord says that I'm even in your wilderness. I'm walking through your camp. No matter where you're camped out, yes. I am there for you. Yes. I am there for you. Nowhere, no matter where you place your camp, wherever, no matter where you reside, even if it's in the wilderness, I am still there for you. And I'm walking through there and I, my presence is there for you. But it says that the Lord my God walketh in the midst of the wilderness, uh, midst of the camp. He is there for us no matter what we're going through. No matter where we camp, he is there for us. Yeah. Well, the next part of the verse says, I am the, for the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of the camp to deliver thee, to deliver you. See, when we get into the things of the wilderness and we're thinking things that are not of God, that is just the wild things of life and the things of God that are just totally not to our nature, not for our peace, that he is there to deliver us. And he says in Psalms 107.20, and you know I repeat this one over and over, and I use this and I pray it over the people so much it says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from the destruction mm -hmm. no matter where we place our camp Jesus was sent for us Jesus is the word the belief in Jesus is the word and it was sent to deliver people out of this wilderness, no matter where they're camped. No matter where they are, they are there. That Jesus is there for them. Yes. And they have to believe to be healed. Healed. Yes. And they'd be delivered. And delivered from the destruction. <clears throat> With God being in our camp, sending the word, which is Jesus, that he can deliver us no matter what it is. Mm, boy. No matter what it is that he can deliver you. Then you have to believe in the word. And the word is Christ. You know, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Yes. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we have to understand that he sent that word to deliver us no matter where we're camped. No matter where we're camped, that word is there for us. Mm -hmm. So then it says that for the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of the camp to deliver thee and give thy enemies, give up thine enemies before thee. Otherwise, that he is saying that we all face enemies. And most of our enemies are our thought patterns. Most of our th enemies, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but it's the spirit that is on those people. We're fighting against demonic spirits. We're fighting against thought patterns. We're fighting against false beliefs. We're fighting against... All these things, we're fighting against our attitudes. Mm. We're fighting and he will deliver us and then he'll bring those up before us. But it says he'll bring them up before us and that he will deliver us from them. Mm. That no matter what we're facing, our health problems, our financial problems, whatever, anything that is trying to lose our focus off of Jesus and mm. off of God, that these are our enemies. Mm. Anything that comes against us to, tr to keep us from lifting the name of Jesus 
is our enemy. So we have to understand that our enemies, he'll bring them up before us. But we have to realize he'll bring them up before us, but remember that he said that he will deliver us from them. He will deliver us from them, but we have to make the choice. He will not go against our will. Mm. We have to make the choice that yeah. we will. Now, the next part of this verse says, For the Lord thy God walked in the midst of thy camp to deliver them and give them up, up, give up thine enemies before you. Therefore shall thy camp be holy. So what he is saying is that God is holy, so we must be holy. Now, he will deliver us, but he will not deliver us unless we choose to be delivered. Mm. And what he is speaking nah. is that we need to make our camp holy, just as he is holy. That we need to, when the enemies come, do we give in to the enemies? We Do Thank we give in God. to the fears? Do we give in to the, the jealousy? Do we give in all these things that try to inhibit us from serving God? Nah. So we have to say, we have to make the choice. Do we want to be delivered or not to be delivered? Too many times I see people that the things are going in their life and they just, they, they kind of make the things that they're going through as their identity. Ooh. Their identity. Mm -hmm. that I, and they say, well, I'm suffering for Jesus. Well, because I'm going through this. Well, you know what? Jesus paid for our suffering. He paid for our suffering. He suffered all of the things that we've ever gone through. Mm -hmm. Now, when we do go through suffering, that is a test to see how much our faith is in Him. Mm -hmm. How much do we rely on Him? How much holiness that we desire to have? How much do we want to be separated mm -hmm. from these things that are trying to keep us down? This is a thing that this is where we see. Do we want to exercise our faith? Now, we have people, and this is honestly speaking, that it says, For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of the camp. He's, in, he's always present. He will deliver thee, and deliver thee. He's delivering us from our destruction. He sent that word to heal us from our destruction, which is Jesus. And then it says that, that he gives up the enemies before us. That he puts those enemies before us that to say, do we choose to follow our enemies or do we choose to be delivered? That's the choice. He, everything in our life is a choice, either to follow God or not to follow him. That is our choice. Do we trust him or don't trust him? No. Do we doubt him or do we have faith? No. Do we exercise our faith? Then it says that, you know, that we talked about the camp is holy. That we, the Lord has just put into me for years and years the same thing. That we need to be consecrated. Consecrated means that we separate ourselves from the things of the world. We mm -hmm. separate our things that are not of God. That we are separating our things so wow. we can be holy. Can we, we've totally separated that we are mm -hmm. his. That we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Well, and we become his. So we understand that he wants us to be separated. <clears throat> but the next part, it says, that he will seek no unclean thing in thee. He wants to do a work of sanctification in us. Boy. That when he's walking into the camp, and that he's presence, that he is seeing that, that there's no unclean thing in us. Mm -hmm. That we're not putting anything before him. No. And when we put anything before him, that is unclean. We think of unclean, we think of sins that are just sexual sins, or lust or whatever, or jealousy or whatever. We think of that. But anything that you put before God is unclean. Mm. Anything. Wow. And so what he's looking, he's saying, 
Are you choosing? Are you choosing the things of this world more than me? No. That's what he's saying to us. What are we putting before him? Do we put do we put our ways of doing things that are our selfishness, mm. our self ambition? No. It's all right to have ambition, but is it motivated by God's will? Yes. And that's the difference. Yes. Do we put ourselves above others? Mm. That's an unclean spirit. And we think, that's unclean? Yes, it is. Because it's not lifting up God and it's not showing the love oh, of God my. towards mm. other people. My. So we have to understand what are the things that might be unclean? You know, just, just fear. People are so much into fear mm. that they become so suspicious of things in life. They get so concerned of what might happen mm. that they get into the things of the totally into drama. And they drama and they rehearse things that what going to be bad instead of lifting up the name of Jesus and saying, Lord, I know I might be camped in the wilderness, but you are there and your presence is there and I can be delivered. And you're even bringing things before me that I need to confess and ask for forgiveness for, that I need to ask deliverance from. I am there. I need to be that deliverance. But then it's a choice. Do we want to be separated? Do we want to be separated from the things of this world? No. Or do we let the world's standards rule us? Mm. So we have to understand that we're un that this thing that when we choose a life of sin, mm. we choose things into our life that selfish attitudes our selfish behavior, our selfish walk, that's unclean. Because we're not walking in the things of God. So we have to understand that he says that if we don't do this, that he will turn away from us. Mm -hmm. He's always there, but he says, and turn away from you. He gets to a point that he's always there. He's always present. But he cannot look upon sin. Mm. And if we choose no. to walk in sin and we no. choose to walk in uncleanness or selfish ambitions, our selfish thoughts, impure thoughts, that he can't look upon sin. And the only way we can get back is to ask for forgiveness. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and forgive us oh, all unrighteousness. So we have to understand that in the camp, Jesus is in your camp. God is in your camp. He is walking through the camp. He is there for us. He is there to deliver us. He is there to show us what things, who our enemies are, so that we can be delivered and delivered from our destruction. He is there because he's always present. But it gets down to the thing. Do we want to be holy or not? Do we want to be sanctified? Do we want to be consecrated? Do we want to? Because he's not going to go against our will. There are things that I wrestle with. And I say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. But sometimes people get to the point in life that they, they, they don't want the forgiveness because they're enjoying the sin too much. And then sin becomes part of their life. And then they don't think it's even bad. Mm. It just seems natural as breathing to them. Mm. But God wants us to be holy. He wants us to have our thoughts clear. 
He wants us to think of things of virtue and good report, things of love. He wants us to think of these things. That he will not look upon sin. He only looks on forgiveness. Only look on forgiveness. The question is, I started about camping. Where are we camping out today? How is our camp? Is it in the camp of unbelief? Nah. Is our camp in doubt? Nah. Is our camp in fear? Mm. Where is our camp? How are we operating? Where are we residing? Nah. You know, if we abide in him, he abides in us. Are we residing in the things of Christ? Mm. Are we pitching our tent and making our camp in him? Or are we just going to keep pitching our tent in the wilderness? Mm. That's the question. Where are we camping at? Are we there with all the enemies of those mosquitoes that come and attack us and just suck the blood out of us? Where are we? What's our thoughts? What's our thought pattern? And such a thing. So the day is. Where's your camp? God is there and his presence is there to deliver us because he sent his word, Jesus. Yeah. And he will show us who our enemies are. And we have to make a choice. Do we want to be holy and separated from our enemies? Or do we stay in the enemy's camp? That's the bottom line. And I tell you what, the only time we need to go into the enemy's camp is to take back what he has stolen from us. Amen. And it's time Amen. that we realize the battle is the Lord's and we can take back what the enemy stole. And it all comes back to where do we camp? Where do we trust? Are we in that camp of trust? Are we in that camp of consecration, sanctification? What camp are we in? In the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, I thank you so much that nowhere or anywhere we camp, your presence is still there for us. As you sent your word, which is Jesus, to deliver us from our destruction. And Father, that you will bring things up before us that will sanctify us, that we will ask for forgiveness of. Father, we speak this right now, that you will deliver us and that we can actually Get on the offensive and tap the enemy's camp and get rid of the things in our life because we trust in you. Father, if there's anything that's unclean in me, Father, I speak right now. Show it to me so I can confess and be made pure. Father, we thank you right now that you're doing a work in us. Father, that the joy of our salvation is coming about on us. And Father, we thank you that you will deliver us and that we can walk in the camp of righteousness and live in the camp of righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen.